who has a question related to lab three. Go ahead. Any questions related to lab three? Yes, I guessed right. Yes, I, I'm gonna fetch lab three so you can directly ask me. Yes, Ryan, just say Jesse or Miss Jesse. Yeah, you can't. Okay, I understand. Yeah, what's the question? Okay, go ahead. Anything you want, it doesn't matter. So lab three, so this is the lab report. Maybe show you the results. Usually I'm getting questions related to significant figures, a lot related to this lab. So what's the matter? The one in series and parallel? Yes. Forty-three. All right, so 43 is the resistance that is the nominal resistance, right? If you do 10 plus 33, you get 43, which is, yeah, let me remove my earphones so I can hear your voice on the recording. Okay, so, and, but if you do V divided by R, you don't get 43 and nothing close to 43. Is that what uh, you're saying, Ryan? Okay, let me check the results. The results are here. Uh, actually, I think the results are here. So results for which lab, we just see which lab, uh, lab results maybe. Wait, I'm gonna check this one. Results two or one? Hello? Uh, I, I use results one. Results one. Hi, Sherbel, I hope you're well. So we're opening results one of lab. Uh, Actually, I don't make a calculation. Tonight, 45. So and it's fine, it's closed. Uh, Hala, Anna, I know it should be closed. Nobody actually asked me about this, but I want to see what's wrong with Ryan because probably Ryan did something else. I'm sorry for the mess. I have all these files on my screen. Uh, yes, I suppose this is what you're, what you mean, right, Ryan? So are you with me, Ryan? So if I do twenty-two divided by zero point five, yes. I should get something around forty-five, no? And then one point thirty-eight. So if you do V divided by I, you don't get anything close to forty-five. Doctor, but it, I uh, you You have a mistake. You found your mistake. Yes, I think no. You did. I, I was. Uh, I wasn't uh, doing the. I wasn't at home when I was doing the report, so I used Excel, and something went wrong with my Excel, and I got all different values. All right, so it's awesome that you found your mistake. Yeah. Okay, so I never tried personally on these results, but I know they look good to me. Like, uh, probably uh, it should give you a reasonable result. All right, so that's it, that's it concerning uh, uh, your question, Ryan. Anybody? Doctor? Yeah. I have a question. Oh, yes, go ahead. Uh, regarding significant figures yes. and the error. Yes, Joe. Uh, if, example, I got a value of 10.002. That means three decimal place. What's that? Or average or R1? No, no, my value, our average, our average, okay. 10.002. Yes. Okay. I, I did the alpha RMS. Okay. I got 0 0.1. Do I put 0 0.100 to make it three decimal, three decimal? So basically, no. Your RMS should be one sig fig. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm thinking. And you should but round you should your value accordingly. So did you say 10.01 ohms? 0 0.002. Okay, zero, zero, 002. So we take it as an example, ohms. Uh, and then we're going to say plus or minus 0 0.01. Is that it? Oh, 0 0.1. 0 0.1. So since your RMS is one decimal, I should round this accordingly. So those two have to be removed. Okay. Okay. So you fix this first, and then you fix this one. 
Ah, okay, okay. Okay. Because One more for the alpha RMS. Is it uh, the standard deviation divided by the root n or root n minus one? No, divided by root n. Ah, okay. Okay. Uh, because the, the standard deviation is already divided by root n minus one. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. Yes. Go ahead. Yeah, about, uh, I also have to ask about significant figures. Yes. Um, when we divide epsilon and the flavor, I mean, in our language, 2.992 divided by 0.294, yes. uh, we get the answer, and uh, I am an answer, like two mechanics, we need the answer to be three significant figures. Yeah? All right, let me explain this well, Jana. Uh, the purpose of why we're doing R1 and R2, R3, and up to R5, is to find the average. So to be honest, we don't really care what is R1 to R5. I usually tell my students, be reasonable and don't give up to eight significant figures because it's ridiculous. Uh, you don't have to be harsh on the rounding because nobody is gonna look at R1, R2, R3, or what we care about is the final average and the RMS. And your RMS will tell you how precise you should be. So this RMS, will tell you that you cannot go beyond two des beyond one decimal. So this is where you need to round your average. So which means if you round R1 or not, round R2 or not. Just a second. Yeah, just a second, Joe. I just want to make sure that Jana is okay. So basically, uh, round R average, and I don't really care how you would round R1, R2, R5. Some students are rounding according to sig figs, yeah, and four sig figs, three sig figs, or four sig figs, two sig figs. And some students are simply doing anything, being reasonable, and this is what we care about. So to be honest, I'm not gonna look at R1 to R5. I'm gonna look here. And I assume that no matter what you do, Jana, you will end up with the same answer because of RMS uh, uh, forcing you to round. You see what I mean? Uh, yes, but uh, if I uh, know that I'm killing values because of the significant figures, the rules that are significant figures, we have to put them in the average to round, and then if the average the values are not going to be significant figures, so you're saying that if you round differently, probably the average will change? I'm asking the height average. I don't think the average would change unless if the fluctuation is huge. If the fluctuation is huge, the rounding will affect your measurement a lot. But since we know that the precision is very high, yani you have a good precision, I suppose you're going to end up with a reasonable answer. Okay? Just be reasonable so, so because we believe in physics lab, it doesn't make sense to round each and every step. It's crazy. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. just the final answer. I don't I don't I don't do the rounding. Be reasonable. Yeah, yeah. Three sick figs are good. You know, don't go up to eight. It's ridiculous, you know? So be reasonable. You, know, you don't need to follow each and every step. I know it's not time consuming because you can simply see how to round, but usually when you have a, a many, many steps, just round at the end and be reasonable uh, in the middle, you know? Meanwhile. So if I did it in this uh, lab report, it's fine. It's yeah, yeah, it's okay. A lot of students were rounding R1, R2, R3, R4, R5. I already, I already saw it. And eventually they got the same answer. And a lot of students did not round. And it's okay. As long as you round your final answer, this is important. And you will see, you can end up with a very similar answer, maybe exactly the same answer. Okay, Jana? Okay, thank you. All right, thank so... You. Yeah, back to Sherbil, shouldn't be the nominal, shouldn't the nominal value of R equivalent be given? It is given, Sherbil, when you know that the nominal value for R is 10 and the nominal value for R2 is 33, what would be the nominal value for the resistor in series? It's R1 plus R2, that's the nominal value. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I thought that the two tables are not related. Oh, no, I thought that. Yeah. No, they are. Resistors in series, we mean R1 and R2. Uh, actually, the only way to tell if okay. they're related or not is through the video or through the procedure. So if you go to the lab, this one, and you check the procedure, they tell you do for R1, repeat for R2, and then put them in series. Repeat the experiment with R33 and 10 ohms in series. 
Okay, I know that in your case, since you're yes, not okay. in the lab, uh, you're actually, uh, you need to check the procedure and the results and you know, like you have so many files and I totally understand if it's confusing at some point. You're good, Sherbin? Another question regarding that table. You know, we need here to find, uh, we need to find R for each, uh, for each V and I, and then that R, when we do the average, you know, it should be near the R equivalent. Yes. Isn't okay. it clear from the procedure? Let me see. Calculate each, the resistance for each, find the average and the RMS, compare it, I mean by it, yani the average, to the nominal value. So you do the same for 10, the okay. same for 20, same it's for clear 30, now. Yeah. All right, uh, Ryan, do you Thank really you. believe the videos are helpful? Because I don't think they are. The, the experiment uh, for this lab, it helped me in the last, uh, in the last part of the lab. Yeah, uh, I really want you to give me feedback about the videos because it's, uh, I'm finding it very difficult to record those videos. Like today, I had to record five videos. I only did four. And the fourth one was awful like really awful, I'm gonna repeat it, I think. Um, maybe they're too short or too summarized or too not clear because uh, you know, my phone is not working on the selfie mode. So I need to turn the phone and assume it's taking my face or the, the, the bench. And sometimes I'm out of the screen, you know? So let me know if you believe a video is not clear. I can easily fetch uh, the same video done by another person, another instructor, to add it to the video, okay? Because I'm not happy with the videos I'm recording. So let me know at any moment if something is confusing for you. Any other questions? Oh. Yes, Jean has a question and somebody asked something, I believe. Anyway, Jean, for question 13, should we try and search using the internet? Question 13 is about the bulb. Yes, for me, I suppose you need to read a little bit about the functioning of the bulb. Uh, I've been talking to someone I don't remember who yesterday, who was it? I don't remember. He asked me something related to this question. He wanted to know how the frequency affects the behavior. So you know the light bulb is not a resistor, right? And the light bulb has a special behavior. If you can read a bit about the, the functioning of the bulb, maybe you can guess why 50 Hertz versus one Hertz would create any difference. Okay, doctor. maybe you can read a bit about the resistance of the bulb. Is it a variable or not? And when is it a variable? You see, Jean? So try to read a bit about the functioning of the bulb. The reading you will do will not be related to the lab, but it will give you an idea on why sometimes the resistance of the bulb is varying and sometimes not. And please look at the graph well and look at the brightness well, because I remember I showed you a video where you see the graph and another video where you see the brightness going on and off, on and off, or on and off so fast that you cannot see the fluttering. This basically will explain why you have a change in the slope and how you're having the change in the slope. Yeah? So check it out again, John. Yes, somebody was asking something. Okay. Uh, for the same question. Yes. Uh, this explanation is not explained within the notes or in the video, correct? And we have to do our search because when I was doing my research, it was more of like, uh, it was related to temperature or how it cools down, not enough time to cool down. Yes, 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 you're right. I did not mention and I did not give you any hint about this one. And yes, a good hint would be to Think about the temperature cooling down and heating okay. up. Yes, this is the keyword. I'm not going to say more, but definitely after the deadline or after everybody has submitted, we can discuss it more. So how frequency, heat, resistance are all related. Uh, you, this would help you understand how, why the light bulb sometimes behaves like uh, a, an ohmic device and sometimes not. All right. Any more questions related to lab three? I think you're good. All right, I don't know, when is the deadline for, uh, for this lab three? Is it tomorrow at 11.30 p.m. or tonight? Maybe tomorrow? Because I don't remember what was it. Yeah, tomorrow, all right. Uh, yeah, so usually I follow your lead. 
uh, concerning the the deadline so if you need any help let me know i just want a deadline for us to make a structure uh, jean is asking in question 11 do you want a discussion non omic goes not linear what can you conclude from the change of resistance so basically you need to use number the table and number 10 to answer number 11 so you have r they want you to discuss the change in r so you would see is r changing constant or not if constant you say omic behavior non-constant you say non-omic behavior that's it explain you'd simply say an omic uh, device should have a constant r and this is due to ohm's law and a non-omic device uh, means r is not constant that's all so you don't need to explain more than that okay yes yes as long as you have a final answer with a reason so why do you believe it is changing or why do you believe it's non omic okay any other question related to lab three cool shall we start lab four? yes so that's our said yeah question 14 we should uh, yes, question 14 we should get, yes we should get the resistance and then uh, see what happens and uh, discuss yani that's it i think it's a good idea but you have okay, many different okay. ways as well. So this way looks good to me. And number 14, Jean is asking if he can plot a graph. Why not? You can plot a graph and check if it's linear or not. This is also another good idea. Now for Carmen, she's asking for the sketch, we do V in function of I, right? Because the sketch has a weird form. Okay, so here Carmen, I'm sorry you guys are asking privately and I'm sharing my screen so it's not private anymore. So, um they ask you to sketch a number 12 okay by sketch you basically can see the graph on the video they just want to know the shape so it's gonna be v versus i and you draw with a pencil the shape of the curve take a picture of your work insert in your document so make sure it has one you have only one document to upload and number 13 they want to know what is the shape of the graph you can sketch or you can simply say in word, the graph is linear or the graph is not linear. And number 14, it's up to you to plot or to discuss. Uh, here, I don't see why you need to do a sketch. For, for me here, you can plot using Excel because you have values and uh, therefore I'm gonna call it a plot and not a sketch. I know that Carmen is asking probably only for question 12, but I gave you all the ideas, Carmen, for 12, 13, and 14. Any other question related to lab three? And please take your time to, to ask because uh, nobody said we're supposed to discuss lab four today and only lab four. So we can discuss anything related to lab one to four. Any other questions? When are the grades coming out? Uh, I'm, starting, I'm gonna ask this. I'm gonna answer this. Carmen, I can't sketch it on Excel. Why do you want to sketch it on Excel? Because you don't want to do it in a pencil, I suppose. Okay, how would you sketch it on Excel? You need to create some virtual values, right? You don't have values to do a plot. And please do not use those values to create a plot because those three values will most probably give you a straight line. When do you want to show this butterfly shape? I think it's very difficult to create random values to get this shape. If I were you, I would use draw. Why don't you draw it on Excel? Draw, I mean by draw, like really draw. This is the draw I'm talking about. Let me show you. Draw, get a pencil and do this and this and actually draw. You know, why don't you draw but it? Doctor, I tried it, but uh, my machine is still crooked. Yeah, you can see my hand going up and down. <laughs> okay, so the draw option is not helping you. Uh, if you, I sketch it on Word on a canvas using Scribble. Why not? A sketch is anything you can do in a pencil. For me, I can take a screenshot from the video. Yes, Carmen, of course you can share your screen at the end, but please do not forget. Yes, you can take a screenshot from the video, anything, on paint, anything. All right, and why not do it on a paper? with a pencil, take a picture using your phone and insert in your document, why not? So I don't see Excel for me is to plot. And when we need to plot, we actually plot uh, with actual values. And here I have a weird shape. I need to come up with weird values to do a weird shape. 
uh, Ryan, you were asking me about the grades. Supposedly, by today, you should have lab one and two. I know not everybody got lab one and two. And in your class only, some people did not get lab one yet. And these people are basically uh, not too many. Uh, I'm gonna promise these people that I'm gonna start with them lab one and two, like you are on the top of the list, and maybe start lab three as well and do lab one to three in one shot, okay? I'm sorry for the delay. Uh, I have no excuse. I know you guys are busy, I'm busy, but I have no excuse. So hopefully by today you can get something, okay? Yes, any more questions? Yella, send me more questions, ask. Yes, doctor, can you? Yeah. You're glitching, say it again, Jennifer. Jennifer, try to type it in the chat. All right, so I will assume Jennifer has a question and I'm here, Jennifer, when you will type it in the chat, I'm gonna read it. Anyone else has a question related to previous labs? All right, now concerning lab four, I'm gonna show you lab four uh, on the manual, okay? So you would know what to expect. It's okay, Jennifer, uh, just type your question in the chat. I'm waiting for you, okay? So, uh, what about lab four? Lab four, uh, they will show you a certain circuit. By the way, this is the symbol that we're gonna use. I don't want this to be confusing for you. A wire is just a straight line. A switch, you know how it looks like. A battery, you know how it looks like. A resistor. A light bulb, you can simply draw a circle with an X. And this is also applicable. The fuse, you're not gonna use it, okay? You will have some time to read what's in the manual. And eventually, this is the, okay, this is how the board will look like, but I'm gonna show you the video, it will be more clear. Uh, time out, Jennifer, I wanted to inquire that most probably will not get back to campus anytime soon. Is it possible if we're put as lab partners, it would be easier for us and for you too? Okay, thank you, Jennifer, for asking this question because I have another question myself. Uh, and I'm sorry for the interruption related to lab four. Um, all right, you guys have to do all these labs individual and not in groups. You will see how easy lab four is gonna be. Maybe you can finish it in like 20 minutes. Uh, not each and every lab is gonna be as long as lab two. And I don't think lab three was long. It was average long, you know? For me, I'm finding it so long to correct all these labs, especially that I have 70 lab reports to correct every single week. So I feel your pain. It's maybe more painful for me. The admin and all other instructors had, uh, agreed on the fact that we need the labs to be individual. And I know the fact of you insisting, probably you're not having enough time to do those. Uh, remember, you will be soon done with lab four. Uh, the thing about groups is that other sections are in groups and this is unfair. I do believe this is unfair and I didn't know other sections were working in groups. Okay, I'm gonna, Jean, thank you for this. I'm gonna talk to the other instructors teaching Physics 306. We either do everybody individual or everybody groups. If somebody's doing a group work, it's gonna be group work for everyone. And I'm gonna get back to you concerning this. I'm gonna write it in an announcement, okay? So Jennifer and Jean, this is something, let me write it on my checklist. You don't want to see my checklist. Where is it? It's hidden. Okay, so discuss group work. I don't wanna forget, this is important, okay? So I'm gonna get back to you probably this evening discussing that. Yes, it is unfair. It's even unfair for me. Why do I have to grade 70 lab reports every week? All right, but why? what I want to yes. discuss is the following. Just give me a second before I forget. Section one wants us to go back to campus. How do you feel about this? I'm willing to find a plan 
for physics 306 section one yani monday at 11 to go back to campus for the students who would like to be on campus depending on the number if they are 10 students they do two labs every time they come to the lab like two experiments and if they are more than 10 students i would divide them into two groups and we can try to find a rotational system maybe not come every week and keep an option for the students who want to stay online like for example ryan would want to stay online and dana would like to stay online so dana you will keep on doing the online so maybe i'm gonna send you a survey and you will fill it in if you want to come to campus or not and if you want to come every week or not so maybe come every other week to reduce uh, the the risk i don't know i need to come up with a plan if you guys would like to try and personally i would like to try why not doing it and i will keep recording the experiments and you can stay online if you want maybe we can try one week and see how it goes can I, i'm yes. sorry can i say something please george i have no problem but i guess anna i would love i would love to come because it's better to do the experiment mm -hmm. but uh, let's like do two experiments per uh, per week so every other week we go and do two experiments you can still uh, give us uh, the, the values to do the lab report, but uh, what's important is to do the experiment by hand. So it's better to, to okay, get so another full experience. Of the, okay, so George, of, uh, it's, it's gonna be like you do your own results and I send some results for the students who are online. Uh, yeah, you can see the results as well, but it will be good if you use your own results. So the purpose would be to get results and while you find those results, you will be doing the experiment. So you don't have to watch the video anymore and maybe yeah, not the recorded session anymore. And maybe you can finish the lab report in class, although it's not uh, uh, advisable because we want to limit uh, the time. Yes, of course, but lab. you can ask you about it there. No, it's better. No, I yeah. remember how we used to do it in uh, spring. Yeah, although I'm not allowed time. to visit your bench, so I'm going to be two meters away from you. But still, I can tell the problems you are facing. And how many students would be? How many students? Hala, it's written on the door of the lab, maximum 18. But I think 18 is a lot. I think we need to be 10. Or to be honest, yeah, we should be one person per bench. Yani eight, yani if we have eight benches or six benches, I would say six to eight people maximum in one room. Like, no, the yeah, benches that's are four. Okay, and we need to clean before and after. Like if we are two teams, two groups, we need to clean between the two groups. Like group one, group number one would go in and then give some time for the people to clean and then group number two. I will let you know, okay? But again, for the people who would want to stay off campus, nothing is gonna change. Yes, yes, the online option is not gonna change. All right, who was asking something related to something else? That's it. I want to say something about uh, the group work. No group, no, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, group work for the lab reports, yes. Yes, you know, if we can make it work, you know, I don't see, I don't see how it could be bad, you know, we can communicate with each other or on Zoom or okay, so the communication is easy we just want you not yes. to divide the work like we, we find it bad for you to do only part of the lab report because you need to train for each and every part and you already have the results given to you so it's not like you're spending one hour in the lab to find those results so should be about 20 minutes to do the calculations and you want to split the 20 minutes so that's why we believed initially that you'd rather do the whole thing, it's a good training for you. And then you won't yes, have to study uh, for the midterm, you see? Yeah, you're right, you're right, 100%. But uh, the thing is, you know, uh, for me, I have like two reports a week. Some of my friends have three per week, you know, uh, and it's to, to, to all of our other work with the courses, it's getting kind of heavy. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's the only reason I'm with group work. That's it, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will get back to you uh, concerning this. So I'm going to discuss group work and I should, okay, try to go on campus. It's written already on my checklist. Okay. 
So back to lab four, this uh, board will be shown to you on the video. It's very interesting to play around with. I really want you to try this. So probably do one old experiment every time we come to the lab, I don't know. Let me show you the lab report. You will be surprised. Connect one light bulb to one D cell. It will glow, sketch the circuit. So you're just gonna sketch the circuit. You will show a dry cell. Let me, oh, I cannot draw on this app. So you will show the dry cell, a straight circuit. So again, a circuit is not a drawing. So make sure your wire are straight. Uh, and make sure you use correct symbols. What happens if you reverse the two wires across the light bulb, across the D cell? So I'm gonna do the work for you. You're gonna watch the video to answer this question. You will not be given any result for this lab. You will have a video in which I did all the experiments, which is not long, up to question number 11. And you watch the video slowly, you pause the video and you answer each question. How about that? So do you see what I mean? I did all the experiments, not only a part, to explain and to show you. This lab is very descriptive. It's a, it has a qualitative approach. So you need basically to discuss the brightness of the bulb. I will show you in a moment. Brightness of the bulb means you need to observe the brightness. So I cannot write it in words. So you, get, you need to watch the whole video. By the way, it's around 11 minutes. It's not like a long video to watch. And answer the question in the lab report. And that's it. No calculation is required, <clears throat> no data analysis is required. Now let me show you the video recording. It was done on day three, I suppose. Lights and circuit boards. <clears throat> it was done in one shot. So it's not like you have many videos stitched together. You will see the board itself. And uh, there's something I need to explain before I leave you that this is where I put the batteries and I'm not gonna use batteries. I used a power supply connected to my board instead. And this is the voltage of the power supply because I wanted you to see that the power supply is basically giving a constant voltage. I do not trust the batteries. Every time I touch the batteries or I move the batteries, the voltage is gonna change and it's gonna affect the brightness of my bulb and I don't like this. In this case, if I have a power supply on my board, given to the board, I can keep track of my terminal voltage and make sure it's a constant. And if I fast forward the video, you would see that it's barely changing. You see? All right. Now, uh, the first part of the lab, you would see that I'm explaining what you have on the board. So basically, these are vacant spring. Vacant means I can put on them anything I want. You have a switch here that I'm not gonna use. You have battery sockets that I'm not gonna use. You have a transistor socket that I'm not gonna use. This is a potentiometer. I said rheostat by mistake. No, actually I said thermostat by mistake. Thermostat varies with temperature. This is a rheostat. So by turning the knob, you will have a variable resistor between leg number one and leg number two. You have those three bulbs. They are identical. They're not connected. You do the connection. If I first fast forward the video, I will show you at some point the power supply. It's here. Let me show you. It's a little bit heavy, so this is the power supply I'm using. The power supply is basically connected to the board through those wires. All right, why am I using three volts? Because I want to mimic the behavior of the battery. By the way, I couldn't get three volts, so 2.8, 2.9 is okay. Uh, each battery is 1.5, and usually we use them together in series, so which gives me three volts. Why not one battery alone? Because 1.5 volts is enough to is not enough to light three bulbs. It's gonna be so dim that it's not gonna be really visible. Okay, so let me fast forward how to do the connections. By the way, I was checking if the bulbs were functioning. The first bulb functioning, second bulb functioning, third bulb functioning. The and I'm gonna ask you here to observe the brightness. They should have exactly the same brightness because they are identical. But the brightness depends on many things. If this light bulb, you unscrew it or it's not well inserted in the socket, maybe it's gonna be a little bit dim. So this is a source of error that could be confusing for you. So, and then I'm gonna do the connection with those thin wires connect my determinants of the power supply to the first bulb, second, and you can see the brightness, and then I'm gonna switch the wires from here 
and switch the wires from here for you to be able to compare the brightness before and after. By the way, you can go forward and backward to compare the brightness. And here I'm gonna connect two bulbs in parallel. Okay, you see the brightness. You can go backward and see how it was when one of the bulbs was not connected. And then I disconnect to show you the brightness so you can go forward backwards. Okay, I hope this video is informative in terms of uh, observation. And you can see a series connection. You can discuss the brightness, how low or how high the brightness is, and then compare it to one bulb and to the parallel connection and three connections in series. So you see, it's, you can see it's, it's on, the bulbs are on, but the brightness is very low. And so on and so forth. Eventually, uh, and I'm, I'm gonna unscrew the bulb. Do you see that I unscrew the bulb? I, what, by unscrew, I mean removing the bulb from the socket. Do the other bulbs uh, go off or they stay on? That's the question. And eventually I'm gonna use the, not the thermostat, the rheostat, Jesse, that was a mistake. But I always do mistakes in all the videos. It's normal to me. So this is the rheostat connected in series with the bulb. And here I'm gonna play around with the knob to put the bulb on and off. So again, the rheostat is a variable resistor. It's as if I'm varying the resistor in the circuit. And keep an eye on your total voltage. It's always constant. So if you watch this video, it's 11 minutes and a half. It should be enough to answer all the questions in the lab report. So eventually, if I visit your Blackboard, I hope it's still on. You're supposed, yeah, you're supposed to expect the following for lab four. Uh, yes, lab four, the recorded session of now, uh, where you submit the lab and the experiment, the video. And again, you go to the manual to fetch the manual part for you to fill it in. And that's it. I'm done. You are dismissed unless you want to show me something or talk to me about something or ask anything or discuss Sorry, anything. I have a... Yes, go ahead, Dana. What is the midterm? Excellent question. Thank you so much. So, by Wednesday, I should be able to give you a tentative time and date. Uh, the midterm is going to happen in two or three weeks maximum. Usually, we target the midterm to be before the withdrawal time and after we finish lab four. I mean by lab four, you submitting lab four and me giving you back the grades, which means you need a week to submit lab four and a week for me to give you back the grade. So the midterm should be in two weeks or three weeks. But I should give myself time from Monday to day until Wednesday to talk to the other instructors. I already told them that I need us to decide on a date and communicate it with you and give you a few hours for you to agree or not agree. Maybe you would want to change a bit the timing or the date before we make it official. Okay, Dana, any other question? Somebody wanted to show me something on paint. Sounds interesting. Who was this someone? Or maybe it's not important anymore. All right, so you guys, if you, have, if you don't have questions, you are more wel uh, welcome to